Hello, Shams. Hi. Uh, welcome uh, to our Dayaksha studio. And also, thank you for coming to the event that Restart Initiative has organized together with Heritage School in Heritage School in Berlin. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, what is your impression about, first of all, the skill building event uh, that we organized where there were only women participants? Yes, I mean, you know, being a gender expert, of course, I appreciate having women coming and talking about these issues. This is a difficult time to talk about these issues. You know, we didn't have the declaration yesterday when we were actually doing, it came out yesterday, actually when we were doing this discussion. So it was a bit harder uh, to talk about this, but I, this is a very unique group in the sense that everybody is very constructive. Nobody talks about past, everybody talks about future, and that we have a shared understanding that we are talking about the future of our children, and that we need to make better decisions for that. Uh, and so uh, if you have that frame of mind, if that's how you're approaching it, it's much easier to see opportunities. And if you remember, we talked about uh, collaboration on different levels, we talked about skills building, for mediation, we, we talk about this mediation school idea that we really like. We go to the ideas and project ideas that you have discussed uh, at this event. Um, so have you been your gender and development expert? You have been at many events which were about Caucasus, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, I guess. Uh, have there been other events? which were on non-woman issues, because this was not a, you know, woman issue, it was broader topic, uh, where there were only women participants? Not really. I mean, it sometimes happens that it's organically, if it's a theme that's more, more interested, social issues usually, you get more women participating. But usually, no, these dialogues are dominated by men. So it's it was the first men. time you, you can say yes, that. Yes, it's usually majority men in the room, in my experience, right? Um, so it is a trend because you've seen us too. We and what was different then? Like you have now this woman and you had other events where there were men. Like how does that impact the dynamic of the group? Uh, it depends on personalities really. It's not men and women. I think we just got lucky that we have this amazing woman coming. Because I have seen the groups where there are women and there was a lot of non-constructive dialogue, if you can call that dialogue, monologues happening, right? So it's really a personality, you know, some of these people have been working with international organizations for a long time. They are educators, so they have a different opinion, different approach. But of course, if it's women, it's easier to frame the conversation around children or future generation. When you say we are, we are here to talk about the future of the region, we are here to talk about the future of our children, I think it resonates and react, women react more to that. And we saw it in this group as well, that people were very constructive, very future forward looking. And I mean, everybody carries bruises from this war. Nobody is immune, you know, like I myself, you know, I, I'm from Kerbajer originally, if you, you know, it's part of who I am. And that, you know, I have my own bruises and there was other people in the room who had their own. But then women kind of, they sometimes, for them, it's, I don't say it's easier, but they have the side of themselves that they can overlook that and kind of think about the future. Um, and that, that might happen in the main group as well, but maybe it's the way we also structured these dialogues lately, that we are, we are also very future focused. That makes a difference. But sometimes, to be honest, it's just personalities. You know, it doesn't matter men and women. <laughs> you just get somebody who can't, and for many reasons. No, I'm very glad the, this time Heritage School and Restart Nature really managed the only woman group because usually uh, we really try to bring more women, but it's just hard. Sometimes there are not enough women in the leading positions, uh, sometimes, like in the think tanks area, for example. No, there are, in, I, I think, not enough think tanks in Azerbaijan, and then those think tanks that exist that mostly are men, you know, at the top of this think tanks and also many other organizations, you know, and, um, but uh, I'm glad 
it worked out this time. Uh, and, and, and by the way, in the past, we were very much uh, criticized and rightly so for not being able to create balance or, uh, but uh, I'm glad that this time this effort really worked and we went extra mile. Yeah. Uh, well, one one of the yeah, but but also it was, uh, I think that, uh, you know, I'm, um, I'm glad that also it was not just, you know, participants came because they were women, that was not the main criteria, but the criteria, each of participants has huge experience like yourself. Um, but let's go back to the uh, to the event itself. Like, which ideas were discussed? Uh, what captured your what what ideas you think uh, you found interesting? So two ideas that I'm really passionate about. Number one is this tourism project. I really hope we can do it. It's like small scale tourism in the villages, in the you know, in the different parts of Azerbaijan and in Azerbaijan and Armenia and Georgia, where we are also supporting the vulnerable low-income families that they can live off of tourism uh, and that we build their capacities to be able to run it as a business and a hospitality business, which has its own characteristic, right? How you meet people, how do you do it, what are the... So the idea is developing this each dialect from the last skills building dialect now. Nowadays, we have a single proposal now, which we didn't have before. I really like the idea, that idea because it reaches to the rural idea, I like that, that it brings income to the families who wouldn't normally have that access to the market or that income. It brings market to the villages. I like that idea. I like that that I'm sure that some of these small or micro business owners are gonna be women because in the villages, usually women are, you know, are the, in the service providing since they are kind of doing this kind of job. So hopefully we can make this happen, This, but this is a huge project. So I'm both excited and overwhelmed. Hopefully we can start small and then we can move forward. The good news is that it's priority of the Azerbaijani government and Armenian government. Tourism development is priority of all three South Caucasus countries. And yesterday for the first time, Armenian and Azerbaijani government started supporting started each supporting other. So they said we want to work together. So this is one area I'm sure none of this, the governments will not, they will be at the table as well because tourism development, it's, it's the, you know, prior to both governments. So the another one that I'm excited about is this mediation skills training, because I think this is a kind of skill we need in country. You know, it, I don't need these people right now go do mediation internationally, but we need this skill in the country. We need to have constructive dialogue about things in the country. And I think this is the, if we can develop, you know, capacity of cohorts every year where young people learn how to use nonviolent language, where they learn how to facilitate a discussion in the manner that the sides really hear each other. You know, because most of the time, even in, in my experience, even within the country, it's usually monologue, like the sides don't really hear each other. So I think there's so much we can do in country. You know, we can be inclusive. Do we hear older generation? Do we hear younger generation? Do we hear women? And we need, so that, for that, I think it's the kind of skill that you need everywhere. So building the capacity of young people in this would be very useful. And then, you know, down the road, if there's an opportunity to really negotiate or be a mediator, then you talk to the other side, that would be even more better, you know. But, but right now, it, because, and also because there are educators in the room, I think that's why we feel like this is something we want to do. One addition we have, maybe do a handbook in both languages on nonviolent violent communication, which is also, again, you can apply it to your life, you can apply it to your work, you can apply it to business sector, you know, so uh, it doesn't, so, so those are the both ideas, but then we also had lots of new ideas. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to ask you this question. So uh, this uh, ECATS project, the uh, uh, Economic Connectivity Project, there was um, uh, also steering committees meeting today. Um, how do you see, where should we take and you're a member of uh, the steering committee, or what were discussed and where do you think, uh, what do experts think, where should we take this project in the future? What should be strategic directions? What should be in specific projects that you think will be useful to work on? Well, one agreement that was very clear 
that economic connectivity is the key. It is still a powerful instrument of peace building. So I think nobody doubted that, nobody challenged that. We still feel like this is the right approach to talk about economic connectivity because that creates incentives for people to work together. And uh, so that's, that's, I think that's important for us to kind of agree on every time we meet as a steering committee people. Uh, there were lots of ideas, you know, floated around. I think one idea that captured everybody's attention is economic diversification. It seems like both countries talk a lot about economic diversification. It seems like almost like a national priority to do it. Azerbaijan has committed officially, Armenia has committed officially for economic diversification. Then from that, if you remember, we moved into uh, energy diversification and then green energy. And then how do we do energy diversification? How do we, you know, cut our dependency from other countries in some way, but also how do we use uh, green energy resources? Uh, so that seems like one, one place where we can do more. Another idea was about, you know, some people talked about agriculture is a common issue that we can talk about. And there's a lot of disaster risk management in agriculture that uh, some people who work in border communities think that's an important issue to take up. So, you know, within the agricultural sector, there is then a place to talk about disaster risk management. We also talked about environment, which is also a common issue. You know, water scarcity is going to be a common issue. It's interesting for both sides of everybody right now in the region. So I think we have kind of, kind of found quite a few places where we can work together. There was a lot of ideas floated about the assessments, different type of rapid assessments or in-depth assessments, economic assessments. I don't know if we can do it as, as we start and heritage to school, but um, I think all of them are worth considering and, you know, and discussing. Yeah. And there was even a very interesting idea of organizing first Azerbaijan Armenia economic forum and build up till we organize it, maybe organize some events specifically in different areas of economy where we bring together uh, academics, uh, researchers, but also practitioners business people uh, who can make money, create jobs, both in Armenia and Azerbaijan, and help each other to benefit from this cooperation. Well, uh, thank you very much for coming and thank you that you came both to our program and to our events. You're very welcome. Thank you.